All right, guys, once we've done a couple of the static stretches over there against the wall, working on the hips, we sometimes move to the rig to kind of open up the shoulders depending on what we're doing that day. So one of my favorite go-tos uh, for shoulder mobility and kind of keeping those shoulders healthy is the banded shoulder distraction. This is a three-part stretch. Uh, begins with the complex task of actually, actually putting this uh, band up on the rig here. So basically put the band through and just kind of loop it through itself just like so. And once you've done that, could have a nice little tight seal right there. And then once we're here, we can go ahead and start the, uh, the actual bundle shoulder distraction. Allison's gonna come through. She's gonna kind of lift her, put her hand in through the bottom uh, like that, palm up, and then just kind of grab a hold of the band and kind of pull, sit back, sitting into a deep stretch uh, what we're looking for here, I'm looking for that chest to kind of go below the arm. I'm looking for a nice tricep and lat stretch. All right, so if this is pretty easy for you, you're not getting that much of a stretch, whatever hand you have forward, you can take that foot on the same side and kind of step back into kind of sort of a lunge and turn toward that band just a little bit. And this is a very deep, uh, comprehensive shoulder stretch here. You're going to really open up those shoulders for that overhead position. All right, once we've done this, you hold this for about 20 seconds or so. We're going to move into the second stretch, which is going to be getting into the delt. So she's just simply going to keep that same hand in there, rotate that band across the body there, and kind of let gravity do the work. I'm sorry. <laughs> Get over here beside her. She's just going to kind of lean away and, uh, again, let gravity do the work, really opening up the shoulders, stretching that delt out pretty well, pretty good there. All right, once we held that for about 20 seconds or so, then we're going to get into the third and final stretch. Uh, she's going to take that elbow, that same arm, put in there, raising that elbow up over the head. And again, gravity's doing this thing here. She's just simply going to lean forward. And if you notice the nice stretch of the tricep and the lat, we're going to hold this. This really opens up the front rack position or the overhead position, uh, depending on what we're doing that day. All right, so that is your three-part banded shoulder distraction. You're going to do that on both sides. Okay, so one of the most common things I see uh, uh, with mobility-wise limitations is the front rack, all right? That's when we have that barbell here sitting in our, on our chest and we're going up overhead. A lot of people have a hard time doing that. And one of the greatest stretches I've encountered to kind of open up the front rack is this little guy we're gonna show you right here. So Allison takes a green band. She's gonna step her heel on it. Notice the band is kind of behind her there. She's gonna, once she grabs that band, it's going to go right across her palm, right where that bar would be. And she's going to simply shoot that elbow up, bring it, lay it down on this. This is a barbell, but we can lay it on anything. We want that hand kind of outside her shoulder there. We want a little bit of the external rotation. Uh, once she's here, outside just a little bit. I'm going to sit, step back just a little bit, Allison. Elbow in, and then she's just simply going to relax down and that elbow is going to come up and that basically the band is providing the tension that we need to get that stretch. We're going to hold this about 20 seconds or so. And it's really going to assist uh, in that front rack mobi mobility whenever we're doing front squats or any jerking motions from the front rack. All right, so we're going to get into a few more of the dynamic stretches using the bands uh, that we do after we've done all the shoulder opening and the hip opening and stuff like that. So we're going to kind of reinforce uh, some of that new range of motion we got through some uh, dynamic movements with the band. Uh, first thing we're going to do, banded good morning. I like to use these on deadlift days or power clean days. Uh, basically, going to step into the band she has here, about hip width distance here. She's going to bend down. Don't make this more hard, more difficult than it is. We're going to bend down, put her head through, as opposed to trying to pull that band up over our head. Once she's here, Holding on to the bands, we're going to attempt to try to keep those legs mostly straight, maybe just a, an inch or so bend, but send those hips back and really utilizing those uh, hamstrings and those glutes, keeping that back nice and flat, basically just priming the glutes and the hamstrings for whatever movement we're going to be doing, be it deadlifts or power cleans. I'm going to have Allison turn to her side here. Like I said, I really want to emphasize how nice and flat that back is and not curved. So it's all hamstrings, all glutes in this guy right here. All right, so this is your banded good morning. All right, we have another stretch, or I guess a dynamic thing we like to use on shoulder day especially. This is the band pull apart. Uh, notice you've got a red band here. We're just using a single strand of the red band. Uh, knuckles forward, you're just going to engage those lats and those scaps, pulling apart. Usually do like 10 to 15 of these to kind of prime those shoulders, uh, getting ready for whatever movement we're doing there. Okay, so this is your band pull-aparts. 
Okay, so the final dynamic banded uh, work we like to do is the banded glute walk. Again, squat days, deadlift days, any day where we do a lot of hip uh, activity, a lot of hip movements, uh, we need to really get those guys fired up, primed, ready to go. So first thing uh, on the banded glute walk, notice she puts the band. We put it just below the knee. I mean, if that's not uncomfortable, maybe just above the knee, whatever's comfortable for you. But the most important thing I tell my people, bow-legged water skier, all right? So those feet are perfectly straight and she kind of pushes those knees out, gets those arches off the ground. And we're gonna try to maintain that about eight to 12 inches between our feet. And we're simply gonna walk 10 to 12 steps one way and then walk 10 to 12 steps back. Notice, like I said, her feet uh, are staying perfectly straightforward. Let's go ahead and show them those heels slipping in like this right here, which is what we wanna try to avoid to do. Totally defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do there if those heels come in like that. So I want to keep those feet perfectly straight, just like your water skiing on, behind a boat. All right. Once she's done side to side, 10 to 12 steps both ways, she's going to turn around and go back and forward. So she's basically going to just turn around and start walking backwards or forwards, <laughs> like so. Same, same concept applies here. We're keeping those feet perfectly straight and just doing what some people call these monster walks. But, uh, and we're going to walk forwards and backwards or backwards and forwards, doesn't really matter, as long as we get 10 to 12 steps both directions. And the final part of this, she's just simply going to lie down wherever she is, where she finishes, uh, pulling those heat, uh, heels up toward her butt about eight inches apart or so. And we're basically going to squeeze those knees apart, hold it for two to three seconds and relax. And basically this is just really priming those hips, uh, the glute meads here, the everything getting them ready to go like i said if we're doing squats or deadlifts or whatever it turns everything on all right so that is your banded glute walk